After the fatal shooting of Michael Brown, some called it an isolated incident. That's why this week we've been spotlighting the tensions that break out far too often between police and the communities they're sworn to protect. On Wednesday, we talked about 22-year-old John Crawford III. He was holding a toy gun in an Ohio Walmart when he was shot and killed by police. On Thursday, we talked to the mother of Gregory Towns Jr., who died after Georgia police tased him, allegedly more than a dozen times, when he wouldn't get up. Tonight, we turn to Forney, Texas, where this month police pulled over a mother of four handcuffed her and held her at gunpoint after they mistook her car for criminals. Now, they were looking for a tan Toyota occupied by four black males allegedly waving a gun. Instead, they got Kamitra Baba in a burgundy Nissan driving with her children. Keep walking backwards. Keep walking backwards. Put your hands behind your head. Right here. Come on back. Yes, sir. Come on back. What is wrong? Watch in a minute. My kids. How old are they? They're six and eight and ten and nine. What are we doing? Hold on a second, okay? Sir, what is going on? Oh, my God. You up here about my children. And, and you can hear the panic in Miss Barber's voice when her six-year-old son gets out. Those kids in the car were terrified, and you can hear it in their voices as they talk to the police officers. You okay? Just no, y'all in the car? It's okay. No, 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 no one's going to jail. Everything's fine. Now. Everything's fine. Hey, stop crying. It's okay. It's okay. But everything's fine now. After the incident, police apologized to Mrs. Barber and her family. But they also said they were following policy. Quote, given that the 911 caller reported weapons, a felony traffic stop is the standard procedure. Joining me now is that mother for Kamitra Baba with her attorney Ray Jackson and her pastor, the Reverend Freddie Haynes. Mrs. Baba, first of all, how are you and how are your children doing? Hello, how are you? Um... I'm doing okay, and the children are. We're coping. Now, now, now here's what local police said when uh, they were asked about the stop and whether it was proper. Listen to this. Were they treated properly? Was this a proper stop that they needed to be subjected to that kind of... For the nature intensity? of the call that a weapon was involved, yes. Uh, Attorney Jackson, what's your reaction to that? I think that's police speak. They're trying to, to cover their own selves. Um, there's no way that they acted properly in the fact that they saw a burgundy Nissan and they somehow mistaken that for a tan or brown Toyota. So while he may have been correct in that if they get a call regarding somebody with a gun, they should act in a certain way, there's no way that they should have stopped the car that did not meet the description, nor did the op occupants meet the description. So I disagree with what he said, and he's trying to cover the department. Ms. Barber, what was going through your head when they stopped the car and, and began uh, at gunpoint and proceeding to handcuff you? And the reaction of your children, obviously, terrified. I mean, what were you thinking about? What was going through your head through this whole scene? Uh, initially, I was trying to figure out why they stopped us. Um, I told the children, I said, the police officers are falling right behind us. But that's okay. We don't have anything. We, we're okay. We're just coming from Walmart. They're just going to do a routine stop and ask me maybe for my driver's license and um, insurance card. But unfortunately, when they stopped us, that totally did not happen. 
they um, asked me to get out of the car and because I did not uh, have this procedure done before, I really did not understand what he was saying initially. So once I took the time to just take a deep breath and I opened the door uh, like he instructed me to do so, me walking further and further away from my children, the only thing that I could think of was, you know, my God, what, what, it, what are wow. we doing? What's going on? I don't understand, you know, what's going on, but I have to follow the instructions of these officers because I cannot have the thought of my children seeing me being gunned down in front of them. So that was the thought in my head at that time. And I said, I'm just so going to walk really, back you, you, and do. You had the actual thought it could get out of hand. H how did you explain it to your children afterward? Um, you know, I'm still explaining. So that's a good question. I explained to them that, you know, this happened, unfortunately. And when you're in a situation as of this, you just have to make sure that you pay attention and make sure that you take your time and you listen and stay calm so it will not escalate to something different. But it was very hard because I have my children in this car and you're making me walk away from them. And I can hear the screaming and I can hear the, um, just the fear in their voices. Even though I was afraid, well, I had they, to be strong for my children. What have they said to you about it uh, since it has happened, your children, that is? Um, they're still terrified. I took them to school this morning, and uh, Lauren said that she had to duck because there was a police officer in front of us. So she said, Ryan, duck. And I said, no, baby, you don't have to duck. We haven't done anything wrong. Wow. I don't want you to be terrified. And that's unfortunate because, you know, my husband works in the same line of duty or similar to, so I don't want them to be afraid of police officers. And, and it, it terrifies Haynes, me you... that... Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Ms. Bob. Go ahead. No, it just, it, it, it's frightening for me. You know, I want to hurry up and get home before it's dark at night. And that's ridiculous. I shouldn't have to feel that way. My children are not wanting to stay out late because they're afraid that we will get stopped again by the police. That is something that you cannot just say, I apologize. You can't just say, I'm sorry, and then it's okay. It's not okay. We are mentally and physically going through a process that it's going to take some time to get through. But right now, we're just, we're, we're coping. Re Reverend Haynes, you've worked all over the country on social justice issues. We work together with my work with National Action Network. You were just in Ferguson. And we always say we're not against all police. We're not, we don't even think it's most police. Right. But I don't think people understand the conversation that a lot of people have to have because of Ms. Bob. And here you come home, here's somebody in your community, in your church, and we have to right. explain to children some a lot of Americans just don't understand. Right. One of the, one of the sad realities, uh, Reverend Sharpton, is that when it comes to our perspective on police officers, uh, we don't see protect and serve. Instead, in many instances, we see harass, terrify, and sadly be killed. And so because we have different experiences that have fed our perspective, the sad reality is what uh, Miss Barber went through and her children is something that unfortunately too many African Americans can relate to. And so for the police chief uh, to come back and speak and say this is standard procedure, well you need to change procedure. You need uh, your entire department to go through a racial sensitivity training. Ironically, Reverend Sharpton, uh, Forney does not have one black police officer. Forney is also the place wow. uh, where George Zimmerman, when he was going through Texas, he stopped in Forney, they stopped him, and they took a picture with him, a selfie with him. And so there is a racial insensitivity that's reflected in the Forney Police Department. How has the community reacted to this, uh, Reverend Haynes? Well, the community is, needless to say, extremely upset. Uh, from the members of uh, Kamitra Sorority, uh, Delta Sigma Theta, they are ready to do whatever it takes. I was at a, a breakfast this morning, and uh, black attorneys were telling me that they want to be a part of whatever we have to do to change the policies that will allow for this family to be terrified. Because, because again, as you pointed out brilliantly this week, this is not isolated. 
isolated. There must be systemic and cultural change in police departments if we're going to preclude this from happening again. And the community is sick and tired of being sick and tired. Kamitra Baba, Attorney Ray Jackson, and Reverend Freddie Haynes, and Ms. Baba, we uh, certainly wanted people to hear your story. A woman whose husband uh, works in, in a related field, trying to just let average Americans understand the feelings of just innocent people that are caught up in this. Thank you so much for your time tonight. We will follow this story, Reverend Hayes. Thank you. We'll be right back.